Uh, apparently, Reginald Punnett, who we already have talked about, the guy who worked with Punnett Squares, was a uh, avid cricket player, and one of his companions, G. H. Hardy, a mathematician, uh, they would get together and play cricket. And legend has it that over cricket one day they were talking about uh, Punnett's current defense of Mendelian genetics. Uh, he had some uh, people that were arguing with him uh, saying, well, because they didn't really understand the nature of what Mendel's research showed, that if dominant alleles would take place or take precedence over recessive alleles, why is it that things that were dominant characteristics didn't just suddenly appear all over populations and wipe out recessive genes? Uh, one of the more common examples is uh, brachydactyly, which is having more than five fingers, uh, or polydactyly. Uh, that's a dominant genetic characteristic. So why is it that if that is in a population, doesn't it show up all over the place? If we look at a Punnett square for crossing two heterozygotes, uh, go ahead. If we look at crossing two heterozygotes, one dominant, one recessive allele, we've got a, a three to one dominant versus recessive phenotype showing up. And so it logically, well gosh, look at that, it's 75% dominant. So it looks like immediately, just looking at this kind of a general sense, it seemed like dominant alleles would take over. Uh, so Punnett was having trouble coming up with some kind of explanation for why this was so. Hardy, a mathematician, again the legend continues, was at a cocktail party. Sweet. <laughs> and uh, he was having a few drinks, and he, on his collar or cuff of his shirt, grabs a pen and writes down the mathematical proof <coughs> to describe what Punnett was trying to come up with mathematically. He did, he whipped it out in no time. Coincidentally, this other guy, uh, in the same year, a uh, German physician, uh, Wilhelm Weinberg, published in a, ger uh, a German uh, journal, uh, actually part of it was published in the journal Science. Uh, Wilhelm Weinberg published, published basically the same thing. And so they get co-credit. There's a third guy who is debatable. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, and, and no one does, I'm sure. But he gets partial credit sometimes. Uh, but apparently he was a little bit too late. Uh, so they came up with an explanation for why, uh, even though you get you have heterozygotes, you get three quarters of the offspring and express the dominant allele. Well, now we have mathematical proof of that. Get some fun math. Now this is, uh, I gotta tell you, this is my least favorite thing to teach about biology because I'm not a math person. And so discussing math can be really dry and depressing to me. So I'm gonna try to make this as painless as possible. But before we look at Hardy Weinberg's 